Right, hi, it's Gail from Blue Rose Paper Treasures and I'm going to take you through doing the faux tile technique uh, which I hadn't done before so I've had a couple of days to play with it um, You don't need much, it's very quick te technique so this won't take very long at all um, I've chosen the Dahlia Day stamp set because this technique is good when you've got a nice big solid stamp um, and I hadn't used this one much, so I thought I'd use Dahlia Days. Um, the only things that you need is a scoreboard. Um, I do have the Stampin' Up! one, but I don't like the dark colour. I prefer something light, and I've also got a, a texture mark down here so I can score all the length. Um, and it's also easy for you to see on camera. So, we're going to start with the technique. Um, I'm going to do two of them. I've pre-done some of the parts because the heat embossing is going to take a while. We're, the technique is um, using increments of one inch. So I've cut my first um, piece of whisper white, uh, sorry, whisper white, basic white thick um, to four by five. So you're simply going to grab your stylus. So you, a stylus is a good idea for this technique. Um, I tried it with the thicker end, but it actually works better with the smaller end. So you're just going to go in, and I actually go in quite deep. I do about three scores. Um, surprisingly, it doesn't tear the paper. And you're just going to do increments of three. So start off with um, a piece of cardstock that you can use your one one inch increments on. I did try it with half inch, but it was too small. So just score your four by five in into one inch increments. Now that's that's pretty deep. You can see on the back I've gone quite uh, quite hard on it, um, and it hasn't gone through. So that's the first one. Um, I'm going to score the second one while I'm at it. This one is a square piece and it's um, 4x4 and this is where my guide comes in handy. We're going to do this one diagonally. So I'm just going to line it up on the 6 inch where my mark is and I'm just going to score down. Hang on, I'll just bring that down a bit. So I did about 3 scores on it. So 6, 7, and eight and then I just flip it uh, and do the same thing one inch increments and I'm going really heavy with that uh, flip it and the other way I know the scoreboard has got a diagonal thing on it but I've never been able to work it out so this is just easier for me and eight And you don't have to rotate it, it's just that I'm right handed and it's too hard to do that side. So it's easy just to rotate it. I've got three scores. Alright, and there's your second one. So you've got one that's four by five and one that's four by four. So you can see just how deep I've scored that. And that's all the scoring for now. Alright, so I've picked the Dahlia Day stamp set, and I'm going to stamp both pieces at the same time. Um, this one's actually going to be on a 5.5 by 5.5 card, and this one I'm going to trim down. But I needed to do the equal squares before I trim it down. So the colour that I'm using today is my favourite Orchid Oasis. Um, this technique works well also if you've got a juicy um, ink pad, because um, you don't want to press too hard so that you get that... Um, the grout line in there. So I'm just going to randomly stamp and I just start off with a couple of different ones, different areas, and I've got smaller stamps to fill in the gaps. All right, I'm going to do the other one while I'm at it. I'm just stamping with a nice juicy ink pad and you can already see that the grout lines are quite obvious in that but if you had an ink pad that was really dry you'd have to press harder and you'd get your ink inside there 
and that's not what we want. Uh, undo that one. And I've got some smaller stamps to fill in the holes. You don't want to fill it up too much. You want to have a little bit of gap in there. Uh, I kind of just pick them all up as I go. And hopefully I've done this right. So I don't want... I might do... I've got a gap in there, but that's alright. I might put another flower. Oh, that one looks odd, but that's right, we can cover that up. I do the other piece. Grab some other stamps. And just keep stamping. Might even put a little bit more there. Just filling up. I like to fill up the borders. Where's my leaf? And keep stamping. Whoop. And I could fit another little bit in there. And there's that one. And that is all the stamping that we need to do. So there's two panels all ready to go. I've already pre-prepared some and I wanted to explain to you what happens is, we are now going to cover that with clear embossing powder. And what happens with the clear embossing powder is, when you heat it up, it kind of gets all warped. So what I do is I pre-prepare this, and then I'll put it on a block for a little while. Just to flatten it out a bit. And there's two that I have prepared earlier. But what I'll do is I'll show you how I'll use this one. So you just grab your Versamark and you just press it all over hopefully not getting finger marks on it and it doesn't come off on the ink pad so on the burst mark so that's fine and we pick it up and i've got my little box of clear embossing powder here and i'm just going to pop it in there shake it all around Oops, and I dropped some. Now this will get everywhere. Even though you tap it off, once you start heat embossing, it goes everywhere. Uh, even though you think you've got it all off, it goes all over your desk. And then we just start heat embossing. I won't do all of this one because I've already done it. I've already got some prepared. But watch the magic happen when the heat tool gets it. Mind you, mine's not hot yet. And it really gives it a tile look when you start heating it up. And look at that. Isn't that just wonderful? I love that. I love embossing powder. It's just a miracle what it does. So, to show you the difference, where's my other one? This is one where I've only done half embossing powder. So you can see the difference by leaving it plain. It'll still work, but to get that real tile effect, um, using the, embossing, the clear embossing powder really works on that. So that's one I prepared earlier. So, this one I've done, and I've lost the other one I had. I thought I'd already done. Oh, here we go, the other one. Here we go, and that is the, and look at the difference between embossed and not embossed. It's a miracle. Are we still recording? Yep, can you see that? One's a lot duller than the other one. Alright, so for this one, I'm simply going to, I've already pre-cut all my pieces. This one's 4x4. Four four. Um, the one thing that I found was important because it's fully, you know, it's fully embossed. I actually attached it to another piece of cardstock using some tear and tape or a tape runner. It, it's just going to hold a lot better if it's attached to another piece, so there's no buckling on it. That's just me, 
that's just what I found. Um, you don't have to do that. Uh, so, I just attach this to another piece. I just use my scoreboard to line it up a bit better. Right, and that's now nice and flat. And I just need to trim it a little bit. Trim it just a tiny bit. And then that's just going to hold it a lot flatter now that it's taped. I wouldn't use, um, a de uh, I tried it with liquid glue and it was better having a nice solid piece behind it. And that was just another piece of basic white. So then it was just, I've got some glue here. And then I'll make the whole card because it looks really pretty. Uh, I've already cut my pieces. I think that one was four and a quarter. Uh, this is different to the original one I made. I just wanted to try a different layout. Right. And these two can go on. I probably should have already done this. I don't ever put the glue right on the edge because it will spread out. So this is a five and a half by five and a half card. I think this is a five by five and a quarter piece of um, Orchid Oasis. Um, then of course I've used my subtle embossing folder because I use that for everything. I just like textured cardstock. We don't have any, so it just needed a bit of a pop. Uh, I think that one's five by five. And then I'm going to add some of the uh, Orchid Oasis. What's this? I can't read it because I don't know what that is. What is it? Um, metallic woven ribbon. I'm just going to add a little bit of that. Oh. Oh, I don't have anything ready today. I'll wrap it around twice. I'm shocking with ribbons. They really aren't my forte. Whoopsie. Alright. And that will get mounted on there, and I'm just going to tie a little bow. <sighs> Alright, now my tweezers. My fingernails are too long to get it. A bit big. There we go. Then I'm going to mount it. Mind you, I would put more. I'm only going to put four dimensionals on this. Normally I would put more, but we don't want this video to be too long. And then mount it. And I've already got a couple of um, stamp sentiments ready and that will go there and I'm going to mount that whoops Oop. and we're almost done and there's the first one done isn't that just absolutely stunning? I have a lot of um, Delft China and it just almost is the perfect colour. And I absolutely love that. And there's the one that I made earlier, just a little bit different. I just put a white border around it, then I did the blue. And there's the first one done. Isn't that absolutely stunning? I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, now this one. Because I'm using five and a half by four and a quarter cards, 
if I put this directly on the card, it's not going to be equal. So I just trimmed it down a bit so that it was five by three and three quarters. So I'm just actually going to take one eighth of an inch off the left and right. And then that will give me my five by three and three quarters. Uh, five and three bricks. There we go. And that one's all done. For this one I'm doing a different colour to the one that I originally made. So I'm going to see how this one looks. Alright, subtle embossing folder again on a piece of basic white. So this was five by four and a quarter. And Alright, once again this needs to be, can you see that it's curling? So this one needs to be attached to another piece of cardstock just to keep it flat. That's me, you don't have to do this, but for me I don't want it I don't want it um, lifting because I'm very pedantic. So lots of lots of tape. That'll be enough. And just going to, there we go. And that'll just keep it a little bit firmer. All right, trim that down. And that's all done. All right, so this one I'm going to put on a blue card base. And... Oh no, I was actually going to trim this down more, that's right, I remember, that's why I cut that one, because I was going to trim it smaller. I was going to make it 3x3, three three, I think. I'll do that. That's right. Because when I scored it, um, I did a boo-boo somewhere. So, I'm going to just trim on the score line, I'm going to make this, what did I say this was? 3x4, so I'm going to trim this down to 3x4. So, I might keep that in, so go down to 4. Oh, that's a scorer. Where's my blade? There it is. Alright, and 3, I might keep... I'll keep that side. So it's 3 by 4. Mm. I didn't want to cut. Three by four. There we go. And I'll do it that way so that the sentiment will go over that little open area down the bottom. That's right. I thought I'd do this one a bit different. Oh. Didn't do that one very well, but that's okay. So, got quite a definite grout line in that, in between the stamped images, and that's what we want. So this one's going to be the same. Let's wrap some more, wrap some more ribbon around it. Actually, I won't. I'll use this one, this nice white one, because the little flecks in this will pick up the blue. And this is, I can't read that, my eyesight's terrible now. Alright, I will try this one. And which way was I doing it? That way. I just want to cover that little blank area where I missed the stamp. Oh goodness, look at this. Ah. And I'll just, whoops, move that over there a bit. Don't know if I've got enough to do a bow. One side's longer than the other. This is very stiff. 
Oh, it's a bit stiff this one. Oh, okay. I told you I'm not great at doing bows. I'm terrible at it. There we go. And I've got a little round one, which I will add dimensionals to the back. Oops. One will just cover that little blank area. And I'm just going to attach this with adhesive, liquid adhesive. And there's that one done. You don't need to add any bling or anything to, to it because you want that, the technique is all the bling that you need. And that was the other one that I made. So I just cut it, trimmed it down a little bit. Um, that one was still the the 4x5 and I just trimmed that 1 8 inch so that it's equal on the card front. And there are the cards. And don't they just look stunning? And I actually did one in Sweet Sorbet as well and added a bit of black. So you've got that definite grout line in there which is what the faux tile effect is all about. And that's all I have for you today. That was so quick and easy. Um, like I said, use a stamp that's solid so that you do get that nice grout line in there. Uh, use the smaller end of the stylus. I did use the bigger one, but it gave it more room um, to fill in with ink. That's it for today. What do you think of that? How awesome is that? And I love these blue ones. I'm actually going to put them on display in my cabinet with all my Delft china. All right. That's it for me today. Um, go off, have fun, find a nice big solid stamp and a nice juicy ink pad, clear embossing powder, and that's all you need. Alright, all right, I hopefully I'll be back next week if I can find something else exciting and pretty to make. Um, other than that, I'll just quickly duck over and just make sure there aren't any messages, any questions. Nothing over there, everyone. It was like I said, didn't need a lot of explanation. It was a fairly simple technique. Um, yeah, and you just see the difference between where you emboss it and where you don't. It just really gives it that shiny tile, white tile effect. All right, that's it for me. I shall chat to you all next week. Have a lovely weekend. Bye.